If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to learn more, follow the link in the video description to check out my premium courses. One of my favorite ways to create map animations is via these features in the GeoLayers panel. So here I have a feature collection of the lower 48, and if I double click on any of these states, it's automatically going to zoom the map comp view right in to perfectly center up that feature. So here if I click on California, Colorado, and even the feature collection, it'll zoom me back out. And I can use this to quickly create an animation. For example, if I just click on the keyframe button and manually add my keyframes right here on my map comp, now I can move my playhead over here and just quickly zoom in to Colorado. And then if I move my playhead a little bit further, I can head over to California and then move my playhead over here even further and then zoom back out. And now, just like that, I've created this animation where I fly into Colorado and then I go over to California and then we zoom back out. All right, now let me show you an even better technique. So I went ahead and deleted all those previous keyframes. Now I wanna fly into Arizona again, but this time I'm gonna use an automation method. So if I click on Fit View to Feature, right here we have three different options, but two of these are automated, and you can tell that via the little keyframe icon. So I'm gonna select Animate View to Feature. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna animate from the current view to the feature. So I'm going to click on this and it'll also ask me how long should the animation take. I'm going to go ahead and go with the default of three seconds. Now move my playhead. I don't see any keyframes. So I have to hit U to actually see these keyframes. And now it automatically created both the start and the end keyframes. So I didn't even have to manually create any keyframes. And what's really cool about this particular technique is now if I want to fly over to another state, like let's say we want to fly all the way over to Delaware. If I were to just double click on this, you'll see that that just flew it straight over. That's looking kind of rough. Now instead, if I click on Fit View to Feature and say Animate View to Feature, and we go ahead and click three seconds, it's gonna animate from the beginning of the playhead here, but this time it actually zooms it out and zooms it back in. So it added all these crazy keyframes, and I don't want this big gap here, so I could actually move this back over here. So now we have this fly in, and now it's gonna zoom out and zoom back over. And you can actually use this on multiple features. For example, if I command click on Colorado here. So we just have these two features selected. Now if I go like this, I can say animate view two features and it's gonna zoom out and it's gonna fit it to basically frame up these two features. And you can see here in our bounding box, we have these two right here and it's perfectly framed up. So you can create some pretty complex animations pretty quickly using these features with automation modes. Now if you have a line feature, you can actually animate the view to follow along the feature. Here I have this route from Albany to Nashville. So if I click on Fit View to Feature, here we have Animate View Along Feature, and I'm gonna click on this, and once again I can select the duration. For this one I want five seconds. And you'll notice it just adds two keyframes to each one here, so we have a start and an end. And this will probably be good for this zoom level, but if I want more detail, I can simply zoom in. So the zoom will be relative to the amount of detail that will be applied basically more keyframes the further in that you're zoomed. So if we zoom all the way in, something like here, and we run this automation again, fit view along feature, five seconds, you'll notice that it starts to add more keyframes here. And if I go all the way in to something like this, I'm gonna automate this again, but this time we're gonna make it take a little bit longer. So we're gonna do like 15 seconds because this is gonna be moving around quite a lot. If I grab all of these and I hold the Alt key, I can actually retime this, which is really helpful. Now here's an example that I slowed down quite a bit, and in fact I probably want to slow it down even more. But if you combine this with an actual path animation and then you manually uh, basically keyframe the zoom, you can get some really, really cool looks. Now if you want to create a dynamic animation between multiple features, like have a jump around between each feature, you want to use the automation mode animate between features. So I'm going to grab these first five states here in this feature collection, and I'm going to click on fit view to feature, and right here we have the automation mode animate view between features. So if I click on this, it's again going to ask us how long should the animation take, but be aware that now this duration is going to be between each feature. So since I have five features selected, this will give me a total duration of 20 seconds. And again, the keyframes here will start to be pasted wherever my playhead is located. So I'm going to click create animation, and now you can see we have a really smooth animation here, zooming out and then zooming back in on each map feature. Now if you were to use this other automation mode, animate view to features, it would just do one move, simply zooming out to perfectly frame up all of these map features. 
One of my favorite techniques is something I like to call the never ending flyover. And this is where you can animate your map to move to the right or to the left and you can have it move infinitely. So to do this, grab your map composition and go to the effect controls panel. Now up here, you wanna go and grab longitude. So this is an angle expression controller. And on the left side of this little controller, you have the revolutions. And then on the right, you have the degrees. If you grab this little parameter on the right and you start to like shuttle it around, you'll notice that this moves your map perfectly to the right or to the left. So all you need to do is animate this and it's really simple to make this loop or to make it move infinitely. For example, if I open this up down here, I'm gonna hit E in the timeline on the map comp to bring up the effects and I'll open up longitude. So I'm going to add a keyframe at the beginning, go to the eight second mark. And let's say I want this to do a loop that's eight seconds in length. Well, all I really need to do is come to the eight second mark and do one entire revolution. And now as I play this back, so you'll see it starts here at the prime meridian, goes from the left to the right. And then at the eight second mark, it will loop. Super duper cool. Now, another technique you can use is just use a simple expression. So if I just delete these keyframes and then alt click the parameter, I can do time times something like 25. And what this is gonna do, it will now, instead of looping, this is just gonna animate the movement here infinitely. Now I need to make sure I finalize this, but if you're working with a really long composition, this might be the technique you wanna use if you don't care if it loops or not. So let me just go back and show you something here. I went ahead and created a little animation. So I'm gonna have this revolve again right at the eight second mark. And the reason I call this the never ending flyover is because right here, I animated this little 3D uh, P51 airplane. And now I have a little looping animation. So I have this airplane looping and now with the map underneath it, I've got like this never ending animation. So if I just solo the airplane here, you can see what's going on. I did some um, simple keyframes on the rotation and the position just to give me this little looping animation. And now with the map underneath, we have a cool little visual here. Now you can do the same kind of technique if you wanna do a never ending revolution or an orbit around one specific location. So I'm gonna go and grab my map composition here and I'm gonna adjust the pitch parameter to 60 degrees. So it's really pitched out. We're looking at an angle here and I have this 3D object of my P51 just again as a reference as this map animation moves. It just helps you see what's going on. Now to create this effect, we simply do the same type of animation, but to the bearing angle control right here. So I'm going to just move this and you can tell that when I do this, it kind of pans this map around. So if I just add a keyframe here and hit the U key to bring it up down here, we now have this keyframe. And if I go to the eight second mark and just set the revolutions to one, now it will do a perfect 360 revolution around this particular spot. Now one technique that I use to create motion that will last throughout the entire duration of my animation, no matter the length of it, is something called the ping pong technique. And you can apply this to a wide variety of different parameters, but two of my favorites are the bearing and the pitch. So I have this current revolution, like this never ending orbit animation, but I wanna add a pitch move here that will just loop. So all I need to do for this is grab this again and quickly add a keyframe to pitch. I'm gonna hit you again so I see the keyframes here. So here we have pitch. Now I'm gonna go out to the four second mark because this is an eight second animation and I'm gonna be looping this. So it's gonna loop one time. So I want it to be right in the middle of the duration. And now we'll bring the pitch, we'll do a drastic change here. So we'll go to zero just so you can see that. So now this animation is orbiting around here and changing its pitch but then it just kind of keeps this pitch of zero throughout here. I want the pitch to kind of go back and forth here. So for that, I'm going to alt click the pitch here and I'm gonna type in loop out and select this. And then I'm gonna type in quotation marks so I can see the different methods here. And I'm gonna choose ping pong. And now this particular parameter will go here and then just go back and forth here. And since we did it right to four seconds, it should loop seamlessly at eight seconds because right when this time gets here, this will have looped back and gone here. So we'll just make sure again that it is at the four second mark. To make sure this loops nice and seamless, we wanna add some easy ease to this. So I'm gonna do keyboard truck at F9 just to ease both of these keyframes out. So it's a smooth transition. 
One really cool way to work is to use what's called map comp view features. These are map features that will save out your composition. So essentially all of these parameters right here, latitude, longitude, zoom, bearing, and pitch, all of these will be saved out. So to save out a map comp view, you just click on add features to browser and you click right here. And now we can name this. So let's call it uh, actually United Kingdom view is perfectly fine. So we're gonna save that out. Now we have this map feature. Now what's so handy about this is let's say we're working on a project where we're just constantly jumping between like a world view and this close up of England. So what I could do now is just zoom out to like a world view and now I'm gonna save out this map comp view as well. Call it world view. So now I could just manually add a keyframe as I showed you in the first technique. Move my playhead over and now double click on the United Kingdom view and now we've quickly jumped between these two views. And what's really awesome is if we go back out to world view and I'm gonna change the pitch and the bearing quite a bit, we can save out another map comp view and we'll call it world view pitched. And again, it's gonna save all these pitch parameters. So if we zoom, actually we need to delete these keyframes. So we come back here and now we go to world view pitched. So I like to save out a couple of different map views and then I can just quickly jump between them. And it's much better than like having to manually go, go, go like this and then manually change your pitch and your bearing. This is just way more efficient. Okay, I saved one of the best techniques for last. In this example, I'm gonna show you how to create a custom path for your map comp view to follow. And it's really easy. You just grab the pen tool, make sure you don't have any layers selected because we wanna draw a new shape layer. We don't wanna draw a mask on any of these layers. It's really important to deselect. And let's say we want our map view to animate from over here in Spain all the way over here toward Russia, but we want it to follow like this, like path like this. So we just draw the path that we want it to follow. And now once we have the path selected and finished, we click on the little addition button here and say feature from layer. So now we have this path here. And what's cool about this is now we can automate whatever we want with this geo reference path. Now, if you want to go ahead and parent your shape layer that you drew to the map comp anchor and turn the visibility off. This is a great way to like tweak this later if you want to use it later, but we'll just go ahead and um, hide this for now. And now with this selected, I can click on fit view to feature and just do the good old animate view along feature and move our playhead to the beginning. We want it to take five seconds, that's perfectly fine. Now we have uh, created this little animation here. So let's see what it did. Okay, it's taking us from Spain and it's going up to Russia. Now it looks like it's pretty much a straight line and it's uh, quite linear. And if we look at the keyframes here, you can tell that indeed it is. Now if you remember from the earlier technique, it, this has to do with the zoom level. So the further in that we're zoomed, the more detail it's gonna give us to follow this path. So right now, because we're zoomed so far out, it's basically just taking us from here to here. So if we wanna give it more detail, we can zoom all the way in. I'm going to um, delete all these keyframes. I don't even know if you need to delete the keyframes. You might be able to just run the automation again and it'll override them. I'm assuming it will. All right, let's just run this automation again. Animate view along feature. Now we've got a little bit more detail. And this does not add keyframes to zoom, as you can see. So what I'd like to do is I like to create these animations that follow the path. And then I go in and I just can manually animate the zoom here. So you can, you know, zoom as it's flying. So it can be zooming out, which is super duper cool. And it's gonna kind of loosely follow this. Come out here and maybe add some easy ease. Trust me, this is a really crazy cool technique. And when you start to combine this, basically these automations with latitude and longitude, and then manually keyframing your zoom, and then ping-ponging your bearing and your pitch, you'll get some crazy rigs that look really great. And before you know it, you're gonna be a master of geo layers. Speaking of which, once again, if you want to be a master of geo layers, check out my geo layers three masterclass. If you're into battle or conflict maps, I just released a new course uh, that's a battle maps masterclass. Go check that out, and as always, I have my Patreon page. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.